Okay, okay, today this is um, an emergency meeting that we've called in light of the governor's um, announcement today. Um, we are, of course, using remote technology made available by an early executive order he issued to allow public bodies like ours to convene using this remote technology. Uh, I'm gonna call to order to, uh, the meeting. It is Tuesday, December 22nd, just past four o'clock at 4.05, and it is our um, public meeting number 331. I'll get, we'll get started, but again, just um, a reminder to everyone that we're at a really difficult time with respect to this pandemic. It has been a huge long haul this year, and more than ever, we have to be um, vigilant and, and, and keep up our resolve to comply with all of the recommended restrictions and advice coming out of our, from our public health experts. Um, you know, we are all hearing there is light at the end of the tunnel, but there's a big mountain to get over before that light shines brightly. So with that, Karen, um, I think that I'm gonna turn it to you and Loretta, right. and I think perhaps Dr. Lightbound as well. Thank That's you so correct. much. That's correct. So um, Madam Chair, members of the commission, in light of the press conference this afternoon in which uh, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito uh, announced the issuance of the COVID-19 order number 59, uh, which imposed some further restrictions in Massachusetts due to the COVID pandemic, uh, that impacted uh, uh, many venues in restricting the occupancy levels as one of the measures, uh, and the uh, nature of that left it to the commission to follow suit. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Attorney Lilios to go over some recommendations for the commission on how to um, be consistent with the governor's order in the operations of the casinos and with simulcasting facilities. Okay, I'm, I know I drew in late, but did we already do roll call? Oh, my, my apologies. Thank you so much. I do need to establish that. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Cameron? Uh, I am here. Good afternoon. Commissioner O'Brien? I'm here. And Commissioner Zuniga? Here. Commissioner Stebbins? Good afternoon. I'm here. And we can just pause and say thank you. And, um, and I'm here, of course. So all five are present. Thank you, Commissioner O'Brien. That was a piece of business I didn't take care of. Thanks. Let's get um, going then with uh, um, uh, Loretta Lilios, uh, Chief Enforcement Counsel. Hi, uh, good afternoon. So um, as Karen mentioned, the governor's new temporary order today addresses restaurants, retail businesses, and also addresses casinos. His order, uh, limits uh, to 25% of seating capacity for restaurants and 25% of building code capacity for retail businesses. And his order specifically states that workers and staff are excluded from the occupancy counts there. With respect to casinos, his order does talk about a 25% capacity limit and then leaves it to the commission to reissue capacity restrictions as necessary. So that's what we're here uh, doing today. Uh, and these capacities are based on, uh, under the governor's order, building code capacities as appearing in occupancy permits or uh, those that are on record with the building department. Uh, to date, casinos have been subject to occupancy limits since reopening after the temporary closure due to the pandemic. They've been subject to occupancy limits set by the commission and the limits have given casinos a formula to utilize that takes into account available gaming positions times a multiplier of three, also takes into account number of employees. And although the building code capacity limits are not a literal factor in the formula or the equation that we have been using, the commission certainly considered building code capacities when adopting the formula. And that formula that has been in place uh, up until now allowed for a max, maximum capacities in the 40% range for each property. So this 25% uh, would be a reduction, uh, even when taking into account that we're using, would be, I'm proposing a, a different uh, system, not a formula-based, fully formula-based system. So moving forward, under the new order from the governor, uh, made public today, I'm suggesting that as in the document that's in your 
uh, in your packet that with respect to gaming areas, that each licensee may continue to consider uh, and abide by the formula that we set forth in, uh, back in June, but in no event may occupancy level of the gaming area exceed the 25% level set forth in the governor's order today. And in calculating the 25% capacity limit of the gaming area, which is a defined term for each property, uh, workers and staff of the gaming area, I'm, I'm suggesting are excluded from the occupancy counts for the gaming area, which is consistent with uh, the governor's order on restaurant uh, and retail and is, is for you to con consider today. Uh, with respect to amenities, as uh, in the governor's order today, I'm suggesting that uh, each gaming licensee be required to abide by the 25% occupancy limits established in the order for the applicable sectors. I'm also suggesting that each gaming licensee be required to develop a plan to ensure compliance with these new occupancy limits is achieved in a safe and uh, effective and orderly manner, including addressing instances where additional guests may be seeking entry uh, that would then put them over the 25% area. You know, how are they going to de deal safely uh, with capping, uh, capping um, entry? Um, the requirements under the governor's order go into effect 12.01 a.m. on December 26th and remain in effect until noon on January 10th, unless further extended. I'm suggesting that we track uh, that uh, for the time being. And I would note that I, uh, we have, when adopting the initial requirements back in June, uh, we worked with each property on their capacity limits. I've been in touch with each of them today uh, and we're in the process of confirming that we're all working with the same uh, set of numbers and uh, that we're reviewing uh, their monitoring plans and also um, have been talking to our uh, gaming agent lead leadership today about our compliance monitoring as well. So the two-page document uh, is, is in your packet. Um, I know that the licensees that are on the line, the uh, gaming agent leadership, um, Bruce and, and uh, Burke are on the line. Uh, Captain Connors is on the line. Uh, if you have any questions, we would try to try to address them. Um, quick, quick question. Um, so you said that you obviously you've spoken with the licensees, and you're in the process of confirming. Um, that you both have the same understanding of, of how to move forward? Is that, is that what you were explaining? That, that's right, Commissioner. Um, you know, we, we worked with their building code capacity numbers uh, back in June and July. It was a factor in your developing your formula. And I just wanted to confirm that we're all still working with those same numbers since now it's a multi, uh, you know, multiple, tw we're working with 25% of that number. Okay, thank you. Attorney Lilios, can you just, um, I may have a, I may need some clarification around the count of employees and workers. Um, our formula right now includes um, the gaming establishment employees as well as amenities. I know that the governor today announced that he was, uh, for certain industries, was excluding uh, employees from the count toward occupancy. I didn't hear him say casinos. Is the, does the executive order suggest that for casinos that would exclude employees? He was silent on that. Uh, he talked about the 25% and left it to the commission to uh, develop um, rules around capacity with respect to restaurants and um, uh, Retail, uh, he explicitly excluded uh, employees. Uh, so, the, you know, it's really for your uh, discussion and consideration today with respect to the gaming area, uh, whether you want to uh, include uh, or exclude um, employees for the gaming area calculation. And of course, those numbers vary across the three properties, can vary uh, at time of day. Um, and our uh, 
you know, vary uh, downwards uh, with the reduced capacity uh, since the need for the, uh, you know, the need is reduced with reduced capacity as well. Um, could I ask a question about um, your fourth item in terms of the recommendations for how we move forward on this? Sure. Uh, it, it ends with, it talks about mimicking the governor's timeline and then ends with unless further extended. And I would assume that that contemplates unless further extended by further order of the governor consistent with, you know, order 59 or this commission. Now, do we need to spell that out or clarify whether we intend for it to be automatically terminating action or would this be automatically renewing if the governor chose to extend that date? Which I think the, the latter would be the way to go, that it should be written such that it automatically extends if the governor chooses to do so. And then of course, we would always have the authority to extend on our own, even if the governor didn't act. I just wanna make sure that language covers what I'm hoping is in there. Yeah, we could certainly do that. I, I pulled the language directly from the governor's order, but of course, that's how it appears on the governor's order. So you may want to be explicit on on our uh, order. Um, I don't know, Todd, but, if you have thoughts on the language there in the end of number four. Commissioner, I'm, I'm sorry, could you just explain again what your concern is? It's the time period for the overlay of the supplemental restrictions on capacity. And right now it mimics you know, identically the governor's order uh, 59 timeline, mm -hmm. and that ends with unless further extended. And what's not clear, I think, in that language is unless further extended by the governor or by further order of us. And I think what it should say is that it ends there and that either one of us can extend it. But it, I think if the governor extends prior to the 10th, particularly just given our holidays, et cetera, it should automatically extend without the need for us to reconvene we always would have the ability to reconvene if the governor doesn't extend and we choose to do so. But I would just like it written so that it's clear to the licensees. So we don't have to come we're back. Not, we're not coming back. Yeah, right. yeah, for the governor. But of course, I, um, um, if it were for us, we would have to convene again. Right. That, that, seems, that seems right. Thank you. Um, so in that case, if I can just jump in. So th the language would then read, unless further extended by order of the governor. Or this commission, and, and then and then maybe in such case the um, this this supplement would extend you know an alignment or something. Yeah, I think as long as you say unless further extended by order of the governor or this commission, then it's clear that it would automatically continue if the governor takes action on capacity caps that references casinos okay but we but if he does not act and we choose to come back on the ninth and say we want to continue okay so be it so can we go back to uh, the employee issue i'm struggling with that loretta um all of our numbers that we've been thinking about in, include employees that we've discussed in the past. That's right. And now today you're proposing that if they would not include employees. So that means that there would be more people on the floor than what we would be 25% of patrons. That the, the occupancy would just be patrons. Not, not necessarily, um, because the cap, the cap is coming down for uh, for patrons, which are represent the bulk of um, of the occupancy. Um, you 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 are correct that there's there's a there's a there's a formula there. There's a shift now. There's yeah, there's and, a reduction in the in the total with the exclusion of employees. So I don't know where that leaves us overall something tells me that it's less than what we currently have that has been um a 50 percent with the inclusion was is it a 50 percent um uh, uh, it, the, 
formula depended on the on the property and also the gaming positions. Right. But yes, you are correct. Um, and I think the practical effect is that um, the 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 capacity would go down, but not down beyond what we've seen in business operations. I think the potential practical effect is that uh, there's not a, an incentive for a casino or other properties that the um, that the governor's dealing with to let employees go just to up their capacity number. So an advantage would be, you know, there's no uh, incentive to let employees go. They, they don't impact the numbers. But we have been including in our operations, we have always said bodies on the gaming floor in order yeah. to achieve proper social distancing. All of our restrictions have contemplated that as part of the count. And so now we have a, uh, we, I don't think we would include as part of the count the retail or the um, restaurants um, because they, those employees have been excluded by the governor's order. We're also not including those patrons who are coming, we would include them if they walk onto the gaming floor. Um, so to that extent, our formula did include the amenities before, it doesn't, it would not include the amenities, but if patrons from the amenities came onto the floor, those bodies would be counted as part of the fire code. And when I, I think of a fire code, I think of strict bodies. I don't think of uh, patrons versus employees versus vendors. I think of bodies and, and, and right now the, we have to comply with the 25% occupancy rate on the gaming floor. So minus, I guess, minus, yeah. Mi minus employees, right? Well, no, but that is, that's a recommendation of, of, of Councillor Lilios today. And, I, and that's why I'm zeroing on it. Yes, that's exactly right. Her, her recommendation would be it, minus employees. And I think that's a shift in our thinking. So maybe the question to ask is currently, um, what do we have uh, as an overall percentage and what is the breakdown of, typically uh, of employees versus um, patrons? Okay, so that, and, and to be clear, I, although it is coming to you as a recommendation, I'm not strongly advocating for you know, uh, including or excluding uh, the employees uh, other than the um, sort of incentivizing that Karen talked about. I really put it in this way uh, to follow the rationale of the other two sectors that are relevant to our casinos, the restaurants and the amenities that the governor had addressed like 25%, but not counting employees in that 25%. So it was really for uh, consistency purposes uh, um, uh, and not so much advocacy purposes that I did that. Um, you know, the number of employees does really fluctuate, um, but at the bigger properties can be in the, um, uh, in the few hundreds uh, at the biggest, at Encore can be in the few hundreds. Uh, so, you know, it's certainly justifiable that you are uh, you're considering that, um, you know, as a measure, as a safety measure and, and how, to, how to address that. Yeah, yeah, but if it depends on the ratio of employees to patrons. Now, now the formula is changing, and and the change uh, is meaningful. The more um, the more employees there are per patron, uh, or, or the more that that ratio is, the, the, the higher that ratio is. It's less meaningful if that ratio is very low. And that's the question that I'm asking. And maybe we just don't have that information. Yeah. What is that ratio of employees to, to patrons typically um, in our existing form? You say 200 or you know, a couple of hundreds for Ancor, that's our great. Existing, our existing formula was based on the concept of the number of employees that would be needed to attend to the patrons. And that's why there was a you know, 100% employee number plus 100% of amenities, so three times the gaming position. So for three patrons, all the employees. And we always considered employees as part of our overall formula. And now there is an, 
an order from the governor that we must meet 25, we must have no more than 25% of um, the fire code um, occupied. I didn't hear an exemption for, from us, but I'm hearing, Loretta, on that, in the executive order where the governor does um, uh, turn to other industries, is it implied that we can also exempt our workers? Because I'm, I'm not sure that's necessarily contemplated. And well, they, he, he, he exempted in other industries. And if we're trying to follow the parallel, that would be one reason to, to do that, to also exempt uh, the, the employees. I'm not sure he exempt employees for all the industries. Oh, then maybe I misunderstood. I thought that's, uh, that's, I that's, thought what, I'm, retail, that's what I'm struggling with, oh, uh, Commissioner. I, I, yeah, I, I, I thought he now, did. I might be wrong, but I'm just not sure of that. And I wish I had the executive order. Um, so uh, I, I do have it, um, yeah. Chair. Okay. Uh, so in the sector specific, the first sector's gatherings, um, I think it, it's not addressed there, but I think maybe it's not applicable. The, you know, the notes there say it applies equally to private homes and to vent venues in public spaces. Restaurants, uh, says workers and staff are excluded. Uh, that's, that's, that's my point. Close contact personal services, that column is empty. Uh, indoor and outdoor events, workers and staff are excluded. Theaters and performance venues, uh, uh, says 25% and maximum 50 people. I, I think that's implicit that staff is excluded. I think that the 50 people means customers at the theaters and performance venues. Um, casinos, the note section says 25% and MGC to reissue capacity rules as necessary. Office space, it's empty. Obviously, everybody there is, um, is a worker. Places of worship, workers, staff excluded. Retail workers, staff excluded. Driving in flight schools just says 25%. Um, golf facilities says 25%. Note section says applies only to indoor spaces. Uh, Libraries, 25%, note section is blank. Operators of lodgings, um, uh, 25%, um, no notes. And then there are no notes for arcades, fitness centers and health clubs, museums, or, or sectors not otherwise addressed. So when you say that there are no notes, where there are notes, it says, exclude employees yes but where there are no notes it doesn't that that doesn't necessarily mean that those industries can do what they want you could read that that um if, if it's uh omitted uh if there's no mention then employees are included you, you know that is one way of reading it or it could also harken back to the initial order which may further specify for that particular industry whether or not staff and employees are included. Well, for instance, arcades, casinos and arcades are put together. You know, there's a big list, a big list of all the, all of us are all clustered together. And that notation around employees is only made to a few. Is that correct, Loretta? That's correct. I just wonder if, um, because of the scale, I mean, I am, I'm hearing, I would never want to create an incentive that folks are laid off somehow because of occupancy numbers. I don't think we're going to see that um, with our licensees. But um, I don't, I, I, I think that the 25% is a function of public health considerations and how we're able to maintain the proper social distancing and the, the proper services and all the challenges that come with um, COVID-19 in a fire code. I mean, it's bodies. If you think about fire code, it's bodies. They don't, they don't think they distinguish between employees. I think there may have been other considerations 
for the governor to think about restaurants and those other few. But I um, you know, per, per, perhaps perhaps I can I can try to articulate it with this. Okay. With, what we what we're struggling with with this with this example. So, roughly speaking, my my understanding is that we are now at fifty percent. Is that is that fair, Lorena? Or or at some point you mentioned that. It's never before this order came into effect. Under the present, um, or in the it varies situation. every day depending on facility and could go high as say forty percent, but very okay. in the forties. In the forties, okay. in the forties was allowable. Take take forty. Let's say let's say it's forty. Let's say it's it's forty five. Whatever it is. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, around the forties. If uh, under under that uh, um, um, scenario. Assume that in the worst case scenario, there's one employee per two patrons, okay? That it's not, uh, maybe this is going to be difficult math, but the point is that the ratio of patrons to bodies matter as we go from 40 to 25, which is what I think what we're struggling with. If you were, if, if, if for, for the sake of argument, if it was 50% and there was always one patron per uh, one employee per patron, um, then reducing it to 25% and allowing employees would be sort of the same thing, which is the scenario that you seem to be sort of thinking about. Um, but my point is that the ratio of employees to patrons is very low, uh, much lower than one to one. So intuitively, it, it, it would appear to me that going from the 40s to 25%, excluding employees is still a, an effective reduction. Maybe we just need to talk to, to, to think about the, the exact number of employees typically in terms of a ratio of patrons to employees. I'd rather be conservative personally, um, but that's just my instinct. Uh, Commissioner Cameron, Commissioner Stebbins and Commissioner O'Brien, uh, I'm, I'm well, struggling with this. Well, I am, um, I do not want there to be an incentive to uh, lay off anyone else. So I, I did find that rationale compelling. The other thing I'm thinking about is um, how large these facilities are. And if we're cutting back to 25%, doesn't that in itself give us something to think about as far as a public health issue? I, I, I think it does. In addition, we, we should remember that these are um, new facilities with multiple air exchanges, as well as all the plexiglass that was and the disabling of slot machines and, 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 and reduction per tables that we've already talked about. It's, it's, a, it's a layer upon a layer that, uh, that we've, um, we've done in the past. I, I um, um, from what I uh, read on this discussion, and I understand that there's not, there's still a question as to kind of like excluding, you know, a formula changing because of the inclusion first and the exclusion now. But uh, ha in, in effect, we would be just about limiting by half, reducing by, by half um, uh, portion if, of patrons. If I, if I could clarify, Enrique, the, 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 the cap calculation of the formula we have now applies to the gaming establishment, which is more than just the gaming area. And so it's actually not apples to apples because you are capping the area, which is a smaller, more defined space than the establishment. And so it, it is a little, it is, albeit still large, it is a more contained space. Um, but having said yes. that, the number of employees actually on the gaming area, as opposed to I guess the question I have is, if we're excluding or including, uh, the question would be if we're including, do you have to physically be on the floor to be included, as opposed to being I, in the back, excluded? And is that part of the reason that excluding from the calculations maybe gets that static number more trackable? I, I, would, I would argue that it, that, that it might be. Route exactly how many people are on a shift change versus the people in the back, et cetera. And I don't know if that was the rationale behind certain industries being excluding and including the, that count, but. I, I don't know for a fact either, but I think it's a good guess. If a, a cocktail server is going back and forth between the back office and at the back um, 
serving area and, 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 uh, and the gaming area, there's less exposure. Um, and well, of course, and if, if there's- All those sorts of people who are going to have the capacity to be on the floor, but maybe not on the floor in a and, you know, on a regular basis. But um, we do have a number, I think that 25 would still give you the ability to have those people on and not worry about breaching a cap. Yeah, I think that's that's what seems to be um, part of what uh, Commissioner Cameron is saying um, as well. I I personally am. I just want to hear from Commissioner Stebbins, please. No, I think um, I'm listening to Eileen. I think Eileen brings up a very good point. You know, capacity of the gaming establishment itself is not just the floor, but we're talking surveillance, folks back a house. You know some of these start, you know, we think too much about reductions, then some of these, I think, start to, um, you know, tip our ability to, you know, to monitor the, you know, the, the performance of the games. Um, you know, surveillance is critically important. So I, that's the question I have is, are those folks also included in that count? Or are we just worried about um, staff that's actually on the gaming floor, be it the cocktail server, be it the dealer? Uh, you know, if we start thinking about reducing capacity, does a pit boss go away? Is there more consolidation at tables? Um, I, I think that's that's a reason to exclude them yeah. from the from the camp, so that you don't impact you don't begin to impact not just the, the incentive to um, or the perverse incentive to lay off people, but but to begin to um, to affect the you know the the operation. Um, I mean, we could do a lower percentage if there are concerns also about excluding whether we felt that we wanted to do 20% and exclude the employees. I think the numbers are there to do 25 and exclude them and still fall. What we've seen, we would still be well below that number. Um, and so I would feel comfortable with that, but we always do have the capacity to go even tighter on that number. And you're right to be bringing up some of the complexities around the particular types of employees, you know, surveillance uh, versus, you know, the cocktail servers. There's the issue of the cage uh, right. as well. Um, you know, that's a significant piece of the, of the gaming area. Um, you know, there are aspects of the setup there that are protective um, of staff to, to patrons uh, safety wise, but you know, there's a significant amount of staff there as well. Loretta, the other, the other thing that concerns me, and, and, and I think you referenced it in your notes, obviously this order is really highlighting, you know, the holiday period that we're in um, for the pe people traveling home or traveling in to visit relatives. Um, if I look at your document again, it gets down to number three, which is, um, you know, working with our licensees, um, you know, to effectuate safe orderly manner, including instances where additional guests may seek entry to the gaming establishment after the occupancy limit has been reached. I really don't think we've confronted this under the current guidelines, but again, knowing the holidays and there may be more people about, um, Again, it comes back to the question I usually have is how would our how will our licensees end up communicating this out? And then if they start to get a backlog um, at the facility of people are wanting to enter, how do they deal with that? And I, I have had some discussions with them uh, today. You know, obviously they have already mm -hmm. developed pretty sophisticated communication plans around our the you know, all things uh, COVID, including, um, uh, you know, uh, social uh, messaging, um, you know, sort of real time messaging uh, through mobile phones and, and so forth. Uh, so I think they are, my understanding is they're still working through some of those plans, uh, but they, uh, you know, have been working on those uh, for, for months, similar things for, for months now. This is a new, definitely a new, uh, twist on it, uh, the possibility that, you know, guests could come 
uh, at a point where they, they need to cap. Um, and, you know, they're working through that. And I don't think it helps to think about years past and what those December and January numbers were like because it's just it's it's, it's not the same. Oh yeah, it's not mm -hmm. it's not apples to apples because some people are very hesitant to go, while others might not be. And there's I don't know that there's a way to gauge that, right? right. Yeah, there's there's a demand side here that is hugely unknown. I mean, some people simply just you know don't mind as much, and others really do, and they just don't don't go places. Um, we have those disagreements here with my family. Um, I think there's another aspect, by the way, um, which I've observed of restaurants. At some point, it becomes commercially unfeasible to run the operation. Uh, I don't know what that is for every um, each one of our licensees. Um, we may be finding out or about to find out. Um, but uh, but there's it's not just the, the incentive or the disincentive of including or excluding employees. Um, eventually, and, and by the way, we, we have to, everybody has to comply with the governor's order. Uh, I'm not suggesting otherwise. Um, but further limiting what would be, um, you know, saying, um, you know, just a lower number just for the, for the sake of, let's see what happens. There is the flip side of, you know, perhaps becoming um, not not worth it to continue to run. Just so, just so we could all be clear, I'm I just want to make sure that we um, all see the executive order. Could you share that, um, Loretta, please? That would be helpful. What I want to make sure is, um, of course, we don't want to see layoffs, and I think that's uh, and and and, and um, you know the. I think our licensees understand that there is, during a short period of time, a 25% occupancy um, overlay over the restrictions that were in place. Um, that includes not only our occupancy formula, but also the plexiglass and the uh, sanitizer and the 9.30 p.m. restrictions. So there are a lot of restrictions in place. Um, and now a 25% occupancy restriction. <clears throat> um, if we look at the executive order, I just want to make sure that we're going to be fair um, in light of what the governor contemplated for all industries. Uh, not Kathy, all industries. I, I'm yeah. not able to share the final copy of the official version. Oh. Um, is, it, okay. is it on mass.gov? I can try and I look can, yeah. if you If you could, that'd be great. Yeah. I thank think you. I can do it. Thank, thank you. I, I'm sorry to have tested that technology because I don't know if I could have pulled it up. That's why I was asking somebody else to do it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thanks so much. Okay, so and it's the, it's the chart, um, Todd. Does the whereas is, um, address employees in any place, the recitals to show intent, Loretta? I, I don't think so. I thought it was, you know, largely in the chart. Okay, so now, so the governor says at the top, effective at um, on December 26, um, Department of Labor, any other agency to use, hereby direct to provide notice to the public and to enterprises to revise capacity limitations applicable during the period in which this order remains in effect. Okay, so gatherings, restaurants, 25%, notes, close contact workers excluded. Indoor and outdoor events, 10, that's the 10 people. Theaters, 25%, but they don't say employees are excluded. Places of well, worship. Now he did honor. say this during the he did say this during the um, the press conference where he noted he noted specifically restaurants staff excluded theaters. He mentioned well, I know he mentioned places of worship. I'm I, okay. I think I noted all of this in my notes. Okay, um, casinos. So we're given MGC to reissue capacity rules as necessary. 
So that's a suggestion that we have a license to do, um, to redo our rules. Revised capacity limits 25%. It's, and there's a little note. Do they describe capacity as, as people or patrons? And see, I think that it must be people, otherwise, they wouldn't exclude staff. The, um, Kathy, they do in the earlier part of the order talk about you know what, what the definition is, and they refer to you know, building code capacity, that, that that's the whole number that you're working with, right? They talk about... Um, uh, so office spaces, let's talk about office space, because we have office space, right? So that's 25%. Of course, employees, that's kind of funny, isn't it? Because you don't have patrons coming in, I guess certain office space you'd have patrons and clients coming in but normally it's more employees than clients okay can we just scroll down then please thank you retail businesses staff is excluded driving and flight schools no notation golf facilities no notations libraries doesn't exclude staff operations of lodgings only to common areas. I guess that makes some makes you know practical sense. And then arcades, fitness centers, museums are all 25%. I, I, I believe at least a couple of these categories, um, the number of people relative to patrons is very minor. Uh, I'm thinking of, you know, in order to operate a, a performance venue, a, a movie theater, let's say, which is, you only need the person running the, I guess, the tickets or, you know, for the movie. Um, so well, you've got maybe maybe are... maybe a reason why they museums, are not. Museums have staff. Museums have considerable staff. Okay, I, 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 guess I, just I was, just, be, thinking, I I was be, just taking I just, a guess as to why they may have chosen not to address the exclusion or inclusion in some areas, maybe related to how um, um, the, the ratio of staff um, to patrons is significantly smaller in those that they are not mentioning it. Well, there's also a reference in the second to last paragraph on page four of the order that specifically Thanks. references allowances to exceed maximum capacity limitations shall be available as currently provided in COVID-19 workplace safety rules in order to accommodate public health and public safety considerations or where strict compliance may interfere with the continued delivery of critical services. Um, so it may very well be that those industries, I don't know whether they have specifically um, referenced allowances that allow them to address what you're talking about, Enrique, which is they know that they're allowed to not consider certain safety personnel or things like that in their industry. That may be in there, I don't know. Mm. Commissioner O'Brien, what are you thinking? I'm thinking that 25% with or without them is functionally not going to make a difference based on I, what we've even- I, ag I agree with that. Um, and I would not wanna see anyone laid off unnecessarily. I also don't want to unduly risk going over the cap. Um, it, it may sound strange to say 23% and exclude, but if you're looking at the ratio of employees to the cap, if you did something like that number and excluded, it would give them the ability to make sure they had the employees coming in and on that area without worrying about breaching that cap, but would absolutely fall below the 25% absolute number that the governor seems to have permitted. Um, can, um, are we permitted? Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, North, but I see you. You <laughs> do not have to chime in, but to the extent you could shed light on this, and I see Jackie as well, I welcome it um, because I'm obviously struggling. I, I just really want to be in compliance with the intent of the executive order. And, um, and, and actually during the press conference you know, noted the few industries that 
employees were exempt and didn't hear casinos. So that's why I'm struggling with this. I want to be 100% compliance, and especially if there's no practical likelihood of exceeding the 25 where we've been counting employees all along, why not stick to what we've been doing all along and not risk um, being out of compliance? But maybe the 25%, and, I, and that's because, let's be clear, there's a lot of restrictions on your industry right now. Anyway, so your occupancy isn't what you normally have. You know, it's different. So Jackie and uh, North, sure, I'd love to hear. Thank you. Um, we can absolutely comply with the order with 25%, including the employees. As a practical matter, the way that we count them, the employees are included in the count, and we can't exclude them from the count no. because it's everyone entering the casino. That's what I uh, thought. The only other sort of nuance is we do have a number of restaurants, and the people in those restaurants are included in the casino count. Um, but as a practical matter, uh, I think we can we can comply with the occupancy restriction the way it's written. Right, and included in your count now, um, of course, I do believe that um, what we are saying is that they could be excluded, but you're saying, you know, your scale of your space is so large that this is, you know, you'll continue counting and feel comfortable and, and meet correct. the 25% um, occupancy. Now, I know in you know, Plainville is a different, each facility is different and special in its own way, would your count be more of a challenge, North? Um, or do you count the employees now? Um, so we, the, the capacity restrictions we were given under the previous guidance were such that the number of team members didn't factor in um, or, or were not a practical consideration um, in terms of us breaching any capacity limits that we would have. Under this scenario, they very likely would come into play um, under under this scenario, as a practical matter, it is a little bit more difficult to track team members coming and going. Um, uh, you know, and then there are things in terms of like uh, as we look at the casino cage and determining whether or not that's technically part of the gaming floor. That's usually a sizable number of team members, and then those who are potentially in the main cage or participating in the count that that goes is something that goes into that. And then from a surveillance perspective, the back of house, um, you know, depending on the size of the surveillance room, if we're held to a 25% of fire code in that room, it could put us in a situation where we might not meet a mandate for staffing requirements on surveillance. So there are some, some, some oh. things for or, us. Or you'd have to have fewer patrons, right? Well, uh, Potentially, potentially not. So, I mean, I, I'm, since we don't have table games here, I know that that probably drives some of the requirements for counts, uh, potentially. But in, in either case, um, normally what we would do in other jurisdictions on this matter is determine what a maximum number of team members is for us midweek and weekend, and then add that number in as a buffer to our capacity. So we would essentially say if our capacity was X, that we would go in our team number, max number of team members is Y, that we would simply say our max capacity is X minus Y, and we would manage to that. North, I would just point out that I don't, th a, small, a small matter of, of a comment that you made, I don't think that 25% is intended to apply to every room. You mentioned the count room, for example. Um, I, I, I think you know it's it's an overall cap to have a, a low density type of operation, with the understanding that there's going to be movement and there's a number of other measures in place. Um, it's I, I know your point is is, is is not necessarily that one, but you made a you made a mention of of of. Um, that, that would seem to believe that that 25% applies on, a, on, a, on an area basis. And I don't think that's the case. Yeah, we were looking yeah. at it just from the office space requirement, commissioners, I guess. So that's, that's where that was coming from. But we're happy to receive any clarification that the commission wants to provide to us. You know what? I, I actually do think um, that we may be misinterpreting uh, this executive order. Um, and if people, if my fellow commissioners would 
allow me, I'm wondering if we could do a five minute break and if uh, Councilor Lileos, if you could call um, to see if in fact we were to exclude employees, is that contemplated by the, if you could call the, um, uh, your contact. Sure. Um, um, because I, I believe that 25% based on a fire code is people. And now in terms of the gaming establishment floor, we've been always contemplating that to be everything, right? And so now the idea of all well, the cages and everything, I do think this is hard. This is gonna be hard, but it's not forever. And it, it is to, to have fewer people together and that includes employees. Uh, so I, get, I, I just wanna make sure that so let that, me let me ask. Uh, that, I think that's a good idea, but that, to make I, I sure, would if, say, I would ask why why would the the restaurant uh, be be different? What well, you know what? Or um, spaces I I can't uh, speak for the governor. This is his executive order um, and how it's written. Right. But I do think there's enough in there that suggests to me that if we went ahead and excluded employees, that might mean that we're not meeting the expectations. There might have been a reason for the exclusion that you and I don't know, Commissioner. Um, but I might be wrong, and I, then then we could just then we could go back to, um, all right, then we we do twenty five percent plus employees if we can exclude them, or or something else because the numbers, like Jackie says, it's not going to. She's going to be the scale of their property is such that it's not going to impact them. But we're hearing from North that it could impact them. So it sounds as though we should really understand whether we can to begin with. We, we have the ability to ask um, Councillor Lilios. What do you think? Am I, is, this, is this uncomfortable? Um, uh, to be honest, my, I, I'm, I'm thinking more, if there's any doubt about it, it's a two week period. Do we do a slightly slower percentage such that the buffer is there and then they're not worrying about this. If we go down to 23, 22.5, whatever that is, that is a number they can calculate that the licensees can know that you know, their employees are part of that. We're not running afoul potentially of any interpretation of a governor's order and it would provide resolution. Well, except I think that um, for, for North, you know, I said that you could just mean at the count of the door, you just have to stop letting patrons in. Um, that that was what was always contemplated right with our formula that at a certain point in time when if they met the formula cap they'd have to say to patrons you know you'll have to hold we haven't had that given the continuing restrictions and the public health metrics aren't going the right way um the other just, the, okay. Oh, go ahead jackie <laughs> she's raising her hand yeah, I was just going to say, I, as a practical matter, from the way that we count, we're counting everybody that goes in and out. So, um, if it if our preference would be to keep it at a set percentage and either add an additional amount for employees or just keep it at the twenty five, because there wouldn't be a way for us to distinguish between employees and uh, guests. Uh, well, I'm I'm sorry, I was just going to say it makes sense if we can make a quick call and get clarification, it, it does make sense to do that. Uh, given this is such an important time frame and it's limited and it's the holidays, I think it makes sense just to make sure we wouldn't be in violation if we went ahead with something. Um, and, you know, and, and I don't know what the answer will be. Um, it may be, you know, we have a license to, to have more room or maybe that was never contemplated for the larger venues or something. Um, then if we could, if we could do a five minute pause and reconvene if, um, and see if Loretta is able to glean any further insight on this, uh, 458, so 505, yep. she's gone. Yeah, she's she's gone. on it. Um, she's on. <laughs> Karen, thank you. Thanks everyone. Okay. We'll just take a we'll reconvene at five minutes. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, Loretta, can you continue now? I think that's where we last left. I, I can. So, okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you, um, and, and thanks for the recess. And I was able to reach my uh, uh, contact uh, over in the uh, legal at the governor's office. And, you know, they've done a very careful sector-by-sector 
uh, review and presentation in their order. And it's my um, uh, recommendation uh, after the discussion with him that we uh, take the staff exemption off the table now and that we include the employees in the count. Now there is a short period of time uh, of this uh, governor's order, uh, you know, through the holidays in this crisis period and um, uh, in the interests of uh, continued safety and doing everything that we can uh, in that arena. Uh, that based on my conversation, uh, that's the direction that we, we should take. The, uh, the exemption uh, as indicated on the chart is limited to us uh, uh, smaller venues uh, as you know made explicit in that chart uh, and not to uh, the larger venues like our three uh, licensees so that would mean 25 percent all bodies counted on the gaming establishment floor and if they want to include like encore they want to just include also the amenities to just continue their count, they can do so, but the, the overlay is 25% in compliance with the, um, the governor's order, which is a significant reduction from the 40% range, depending on each, um, the gaming positions available for each um, uh, property. Um, Okay, thoughts. Everybody's got to digest this. I, and uh, thank you, Loretta, for that explanation. Um, and, and to be fair, it, it, it was, it, it's a, a hard thing to, to understand. So that was an important call to make, Loretta. So thank you. Um, Karen, did you have insights before we get going with the commissioners that you want to? You know, that, I think that information is really helpful because you can't specifically tell that from the order. So I think that was really helpful for the governor's office to respond so quickly because they have the benefit of DPH and the public health um, experts. And if, if that's their recommendation, it seems like for the next couple of weeks, that should be the way to go. I think, um, you know, we're obviously moving pretty quickly right here. This is, you know, a couple of hours after the order issued. So it's not surprising there'd be a little... Um, discussion here, but that seems to make sense. Commissioner Cameron? Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, um, uh, that was a very good suggestion to call and get clarification because we were not clear. And um, so now we are and, you know, we, we move on. That's, that's the, um, I, I certainly think that we use the recommendation from the governor's office, which, which is to include employees. I think that, you know, this is real time stuff and everybody is really working hard to, to be helpful. So we don't usually have that luxury, do we, Commissioner Cameron? You know? uh, no, and you know what? That was uh, excellent that we could, we could uh, have that call made in such a quick time. And I think discussion over as far as I'm concerned. Um, Commissioner Stebbins, um, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's great clarification. Um, Great work by the team. Um, obviously, they built some great working relationships with the people that are on the front line of these decisions over in the governor's office. So, um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And hopefully for this short period of time, then it will change back. But, um, you know, we have to go with uh, the feedback and their input they're, they're getting. And, you know, hopefully, you know, we're not reaching that 25% limit um, and hopefully there won't be any issues. Commissioner um, Zinega. Yeah, same here. I mean, it's, it seems prudent. I'm, I'm glad we, uh, we got clarification and I think we should just um, move on. Commissioner Bryan, I know that you were thinking maybe the 23%, um, your thoughts? Um, my only question now is really for North, if he's still on the call, which is because he, you know, you indicated that you may have some concerns with being able to comply with the 25 is are you going to be able to work with IEB to come up with what the number is so that you make sure that with employees included you don't violate the order i have no sure. concerns about our ability to comply under either scenario <laughs> oh, great that's what we'd like to hear <laughs> welcome again to massachusetts north <laughs> 
My, my, um, only, my only point was just that as a practical matter, it's sometimes difficult to predict the exact number of team members on the floor. In this instance, we'll just be overly conservative and build in a larger number. And again, right now it's through January 10th. Is that right, Loretta? That's right, Kathy. This is tough. All right, so um, Karen, Todd, Loretta, what are the next steps with respect to this item on the agenda? So I think the next thing would, because we still have to address simulcasting. I know Alex, um, Dr. Lightbaum has been very patient uh, on the call. So I would suggest we do, do a vote uh, to, uh, on this. And I think uh, we just get the direction of General Counsel Grossman on that and then move on to simulcast. Well, I, yeah, I think a, a motion is appropriate to uh, cover what you've just discussed to uh, lay the, uh, to adopt the 25% uh, cap, um, including employees, as discussed in the governor's order. I'm, I'm happy to make that motion. Um, Madam Chair, I move the commission incorporate the four supplemental requirements described in the document included in the commissioner's packet and reviewed here today um, and as amended at this meeting relative to paragraphs three and four. Any further questions? Does that, and that works, Todd? Uh, excuse me, I think it's relative to the amendments relative to paragraphs one and three. Uh, there was also four in oh, terms of the timing. Yeah, yeah, okay but also one because that's the employee paragraph. Okay. So I'll say it again. I would move the commission incorporate the four supplemental requirements described in the document and included in the commissioner's packet today into the previously adopted minimum requirements as amended and discussed today relative to paragraphs one, three, and four. Second. Any further questions? Excellent. Um, Loretta? Um, and, and team, everybody really, um, did, Loretta was working over the weekend to really, uh, as we said, crunch the numbers. So um, this has been, uh, you know, insights that you were getting to, in the event there were going to be, there was going to be um, an announcement. So you've been working so hard, so thank you. Anything further on the, um, okay, then let's take a vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. It's not your last one, Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes. So Erica, five zero, thank you. So again, a, a great deal of credit uh, goes to Loretta uh, for sort of uh, being on top of this early on and appreciate it. And of course the entire team that got together to, to support the work, thank you. Um, now, in terms of simulcasting, Dr. Lightbound, there you are. Um, and, and Dr. Lightbound, too, uh, you really uh, jumped up you know, yesterday to make sure we could be prepared in the event this became uh, something that the governor ordered. And so thank you, too. Um, do you want to update us on your work? Thank you. The uh, three simulcast facilities are aware of the governor's order. Uh, and they uh, will limit the simulcast occupancies to not more than 25% at their facilities uh, for the time period of uh, December 26th through January 10th. Um, and the wording we used was unless further extended. So um, hopefully that, I think that can mean either by the governor or by the commission, either way. Um, the um, original, Plans by um, Plain Ridge and Raynham didn't include uh, occupancy numbers. It was more based on um, the distance to promote social distancing, the six feet apart with the tables and all. Suffolk did have numbers in their original plan, uh, limiting it to less than 50%. So in um, one of their areas that um, would hold 600, they actually went less than 50% uh, to 250. And so now that would be down to uh, 150 for the occupancy. And um, <clears throat> during um, the conversation about the casinos and whether the um, employees were uh, counted or not, 
uh, I was able to reach out to each of the licensees and they said it would not affect um, their abilities uh, much one way or the other so that they are able to fully um, comply with the 25% including um, employees as well as patrons. Good work to reach out during the meeting. Excellent work, <laughs> Dr. Lipo. She's good. <laughs> what? I, I have uh, great uh, folks on the uh, simulcast end that are very uh, responsive <laughs> very quickly, and I appreciate them getting their uh, documents to the commission meeting quickly this afternoon. So we appreciate it very, very much. And, you know, that we like to use the word nimble. Um, everybody gathering today um, for this meeting shows that, but it's all for the real high stake reason, right? We're, we're all working hard here in, in, in doing the very best we can for the right outcomes. Um, this is hard, but um, there's a lot at stake. So, um, so Dr. Lightbound, um, you need a vote as well. Is that correct? I'm not sure if it was written up for a vote. Um, maybe Todd can. I, I think that Todd, it is. You're rec yeah, Todd, you're yeah. recommending a vote, right, in this too? Yeah, I think that's appropriate. The commission has taken votes in the past and there have been approved uh, protocols. So this is a supplement to that. I'm happy to make that motion, Madam Chair. Thank you. I move that notwithstanding any provision of uh, an approved simulcasting guideline to the contrary, the maximum occupancy at the simulcast facilities at Suffolk Downs, Raynham Park, and Plain Ridge Park be limited to 25% of the authorized capacity consistent with Governor Baker's COVID-19 order number 59 dated December 22nd, 2020, and further that the limit become effective at uh, 12.01 a.m. on December 26th and shall remain in effect until 12 noon January 10th, 2021, unless further extended. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Excellent report, Dr. Lightbound. Karen, thank you for putting everything together for us. No further questions or comments? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye, and thanks to our team for their great work. And I vote yes, 5-0. Okay, now in terms of any other comments anybody want to say to the team, Commissioner, you have the chance. This is your chance for other business. I see Again. Mr. Tuttle's on. Say again, Commissioner Cameron. You no, know, again, just really good work. Everyone was so well prepared and um, and you know gave us great insight into this matter. And um, I think all, to all the licensees, both uh, on the racing and gaming side, for understanding and um, uh, quickly able to become compliant. Apologies, I see. Madam, Madam Chair, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> no apologies needed. Um, Mr. Tuttle, we wish you well, and thank you for um, uh, your work with uh, Dr. Lightbound today. You're very welcome. Always a pleasure. Happy holidays. You too. Um, Commissioner Stebbins, before you make the last motion that we really do anticipate to be your last motion, do you want to make any comments? No, just again, thank everybody for their good work. And, you know, our, our, our licensees, we all know this is not where we want to find ourselves, but hopefully we're doing the right things and taking the right steps to keep people safe. So um, great work and happy holidays, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Quick turnaround. Yeah, and Commissioner O'Brien and um, had gotten some briefing on this through the working group. Uh, this was a very quick turnaround and not uncomplicated because we had such a thoughtful process before, right, um, Eileen? Right. So, so anyway, I am. Um, I really appreciate everybody being able to pivot today in this way and uh, to get to what I think will be the, the safe outcome. Let's cross our fingers that it, it is limited to January 10th. If it has to be extended, we'll know it's for the real 
the right reasons, but let's let's just um, wrap up it for a short duration. Karen, anything else that you want to add? No, I think we're all set, Madam Chair. Okay, for everyone, um, uh, for those who are celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. Um, be safe, and I would love it if our fellow commissioner Stebbins would make the last last motion probably of this year and of his gaming commission career. Uh, let's hope so. Uh, uh, <laughs> Working on it. Motion to adjourn, team. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Thank Commissioner you, everyone. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Stay safe. I vote yes. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Five zero. Happy holidays, everyone. Okay, you too. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays.